The kingdom Stromenopila seems to have appeared during the Precambrian era during the Proterozoic Eon. This time span ranged from 2.5 billion to 570 million years ago. This kingdom is host to over 100,000 different species. The four main types of species include water molts, diatoms, golden algae, and brown algae. Most of the organisms from this kingdom tend to live in aquatic habitats. However, some have been known to migrate to dry land. Stromenopiles are photoautotrophic organisms, meaning they derive the energy from the light emitted by the sun to produce their own organic molecules for food. Some species of water mold can also be parasites or decomposers and feed off living and decaying matter as energy sources. The reproductive cycle of the Stromenopila kingdom is slightly complicated. The different species of this kingdom reproduce both asexually and sexually, alternating between a haploid and diploid state. Diploid organisms will produce haploid offspring, which will in turn produce the haploid gametes that fuse with other gametes to form diploid organisms, beginning the cycle all over again. This process is known as alteration of generations. Each of the four groups of species that belong to this kingdom have their own adaptations to help them survive. Diatoms form shells out of silica, and after the organism's death, the shells are discarded and form sediment. Brown algae often forms the huge kelp forest typical of warmer oceans and contains accessory pigments to extend the range of light it can absorb for photosynthesis. Golden algae has several of the advantages held by other organisms from this kingdom, including the accessory pigments contained by brown algae and silica scales that are similar to the shells of diatoms. In addition, golden algae can display pseudopodia, a trick in which they can extend portions of their bodies like a tentacle to engulf smaller organisms in an act of predation. Water molds have been known to form hyphae, an example of convergent evolution with some fungal species to aid in their growth. There is one single identifiable trait that all of the organisms contained in this kingdom share with each other. Many single and multicellular organisms possess cell structures known as flagella that are used for mobility purposes. The flagella of organisms in the kingdom of Stromenopila all possess tiny hair-like structures. The name of this kingdom is actually derived from these two features, stramen being the Latin term for flagella, and pila referring to the hair-like structures. The organisms contained in this kingdom are all eukaryotic, meaning they possess all of the typical membrane-bound organelles found in eukaryotic organisms, including the chloroplasts used for photosynthesis and food production, and an organelle called the nucleus that houses all of their genetic information in the form of deoxyribonucleic acid, or DNA for short. These organisms range from tiny single-celled creatures that require a microscope to see to the giant kelp forests that seem to stretch on forever in dark ocean waters to mold infestations that can spread across acres of agriculture. Yeah, 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 here we go. Now, at this point in the presentation, I know what you're all thinking. Victoria, you told us some cool science things, and we paid attention as best as we could to be polite. But, in the end, who really cares? Protists aren't really very interesting. They're just tiny little specks floating around in ponds and lakes in the ocean. Yeah, they're kelp forests, but we live in Pennsylvania. No kelp here. Why should we care about something with a name that's too big for it anyway? Well, I'll give you the protists a small, but you shouldn't doubt that they have a big impact on humans. Eelgrass is a simple aquatic plant that plays a big part in the ecological health of coastal regions. It helps prevent erosion, 
provides food for waterfowl and habitats for other marine life. However, one species from the Stromenopila kingdom managed to devastate the populations of the plant on both sides of the Atlantic Ocean, severely decreasing the overall health of the surrounding area. This had a negative effect on the humans in the area that depended on the wildlife in the affected area for food and income. The silica that comes from the discarded shells of diatoms has a wide variety of uses in our society. It is most commonly used as a natural pesticide. The sharp edges of the microscopic shells are able to pierce through thick exoskeletons of many different species of aquatic insects and parasites in order to kill them. Similarly, the silica can be mixed with animal food in order to kill these kinds of shells or worm-like parasites that may be living inside the digestive tracts of livestock or pets. The silica can be added to cleaning products in order to make them more effective against tough grass. It can also be used for scientific purposes as a filtration or water purification tool. More examples of organisms from this kingdom's negative effects on human society can be found on a golf course. Rapid blight disease, a condition caused by another mold species from this kingdom, is taking the sporting world by storm, but not in the best way. This mold destroys different species of turf grass that are prized by professional athletes. The appearance of this mold is sometimes preceded by the use of water with high salt content. Is it possible to make something out of almost nothing? There's a team of scientists researching the viability of this statement. A certain species found in the kingdom Stromenopila has the capability to produce quantities of omega-3 fatty acids that can be refined and used for a number of products including fish food and human dietary supplements. Perhaps the most famous example of species from this kingdom in action comes in the form of the Irish potato famine. You've all probably heard this story a thousand times in history class about how a disease swept the land and destroyed most, if not all, of the potato crops that the majority of poor Irish people relied on for food. Millions starved as the effects of a tiny little protist from the Stromenopila kingdom spread across Ireland, devastating every potato in sight. Diatoms are sometimes used as model systems when examining the evolution of the different types of shells that have evolved throughout their long history. The genomic sequences of many of the virulent strains of water molds have been sequenced or drafted in order to examine the photosynthetic origins of the kingdom. Golden algae are cheaters? You heard it here first, folks. No, not on their wives or on their last bio exam. These species of algae are more like freeloaders than anything else, cheating off the hard work of their neighbors. Certain strains of cold and algae produce toxins that can kill predators of prey depending on their mood, and the non-toxic strains merely boot off whatever the toxic strains have killed. This way, they can devote more free time to chilling out. Maybe start writing that novel. Or maybe just take a nap. You could be larger than life, bigger than the world Living out the hopes and dreams of every boy and every girl You could fly higher than the sky, shine brighter than the stars You could have all you ever wanted, shoot the moon and reach for Mars You know you could